I'm interested in this idea that has roots going back decades, that the brain actually is some kind of computer. And some of the initial researchers in neuroscience and in computer science noticed that there were some analogies between the way brains seem to work and the way that digital computers work, um, insofar as both digital computers um, have a sort of binary signal. They have, we usually think of them as ones and zeros. And neurons have spikes, so individual spikes. And for a long time, it was thought that um, although there might be slight variations in uh, the actual shape of each spike, that didn't really matter so much. And that's analogous to what happens with digital computers. If we were to really look carefully at the voltage changes in a digital computer, we'd see there's a little bit of variation. But um, the way we've designed the systems, that little variation just doesn't matter. So it turns out that there is some recent research that shows that those small changes in the, the neural spike actually do have some consequences. And so it looks like that might be, I'd say, analogous <laughs> to the analog computers that um, we really aren't familiar with these days. But decades ago, they were the computers that were uh, much more popular than digital computers. In fact, at one time, they were the only computers um, before there were digital computers. So. The idea is just that it looks like those neural spikes might have more in common with the analog computers of the past than digital computers today. These really are uh, squarely philosophical problems, and we're in a unique position, uh, people like me and other philosophers of science, to be able to really um, be consumers of scientific research and then to kind of evaluate the claims that scientists are making about the world around us, largely. And so my specific research is just one instance of that. When neuroscientists and psychologists say, oh, the brain is computing, you know, the mind is computing this, and then you say, well, why is it that computer science has nothing to say about that? Well, it must be some different kind of computer. Should we take those claims as just sort of, it's a metaphor, or should we take them seriously? And I take the approach that we should take what scientists say seriously, unless we have a really good reason to think otherwise, and just to kind of you know, flesh out those kinds of claims that they make.